live a life that will result to good today and lie spirit giving me what I want in the name of Jesus Christ. I'm going to say, say this time is not about him. This does not know if I have where they are in the hospital watching this from their hospital bed. I send the power of healing to them. In the name of Jesus Christ. Get up by the world. So shall your life be there in the mighty name of Jesus. So shall you live and overcome your life in the mighty name of Jesus. Spiritually and physically in the name of Jesus. That the doings and the things of God in your life shall manifest in the physical. Thank you, Heavenly Father. Go down and so in Jesus' mighty name we pray. the great teacher, the leader in part us by your presence Lord, possess us to fulfill the plan and the purpose of God Amen. have your way heavenly Father thank you Jesus give us the grace Amen. to be conscious of your presence and to know that you are with us Lord Amen. give us that mindset and understanding of your presence and what you are capable of doing. Amen. Bring us, Lord. Bring us, Lord, as your children. Bring us, Lord, as your people. Amen. You said in your word, I'll build my church. Amen. This is not what man does. I'll build my people and the gates of hell shall not prevail against them. Amen. And you said the enemy could come like a flood. But the spirit of the Lord will lift up a standard again. Amen. Hallelujah. For the little spirit fill this place. Amen. Have free expression in our midst, of God. Amen. Thank you, Heavenly Father. In Jesus' mighty name. May be seated. Amen. You may be seated. Amen. Amen. We bless the name of the Lord for today. Amen. Tango for today is Mother's Day. speak to us about how important it is for us to keep our prayer life alive. Talk to somebody this morning and say, awake your prayer life. If we look back into the life of many mothers in the scriptures that have taken the bull by the horn to fight spiritual battles like Anna, Esther, they took it by prayers. Through prayers, our mothers have taken down great men that vowed to bring down and destroy the body of Christ and the people of God. The Lord has lifted up women, mothers. It took a mother's heart for Esther to challenge one of the most powerful men in her days. Haman was very powerful. He was the most influential man beside the king. Nobody assessed the king except through him. As a matter of fact, the king listens to him. He was very wealthy. He was in the government. He always had his way. But he endeavored to destroy the entire Jewish. He hated the people of God. He's a man that loved worship. The spirit of Satan, the spirit of Lucifer dwelled in him. Because those that love to be worshipped, he love adoration, he love recognition. He loved the attention. He loved people turning to him, bowing down. He loved it. It makes him feel good. 
that there's a spirit of the devil. It's about him only, nobody else. But everybody bows to him. Because without him, nothing is done. You can't do anything without seeking his permission. If you are hearing me today, there are people that have risen in your life in diverse ways like that. Acting like without them, you can't be anything. They could be uncles, they could be relatives. You buy a car without them, you're done. You have a house without them, you, you never told them when you're engaged in it. They have to be part of everything you do. If not, you're in trouble. Amen. Yeah. They make themselves a little God to you. If you are going to travel, you have to call them first. Anything you do, they have to have their handwriting in it. Their opinion matters in your decision. That's how they feel. Pride. But the children of God refuse to give up Haman that home. And Haman was angry. As a result, the only thing he could resort to is to invest to wipe them out. Turn to somebody this morning say there was a mother. Hallelujah. A woman called Esther. I want to explain something to us. When the Lord decorates you, when the Lord glorifies you, when the Lord covers you with his glory, it doesn't matter what the outward appearance looks like. The Lord will place you in the heart of the king. God has gone in advance to understand the plan of him. Amen. And so he sent Esther. Let me tell you, brother, how powerful. When I say, what a mighty God we serve. The name Esther wasn't the name that, that identified her from where she comes from. So that name Esther kept her from being recognized. Are you with me today? For some of us that come from tribal nations, you could know somebody by their name. Are you with me? My children used to ask me, how did you know where that person came from? I said, by the name of that person. Amen. I could tell you the area they come from. And if you're from my area, I could tell you from your accent or from your language or from that name, the way it is pronounced, I could tell you the root of where you're coming from. Are you with me? Amen. And the Lord knew that if I send Esther, her name have to be changed. So she went in as Esther. And so the enemy couldn't discover her. Because God has seen the plan of Haman in advance. But she still has a job to do. Because sometimes we have moved from nothing to become Esther and we think we are on top of the world. No, you are not in the palace for those gold and jewels. God did send you there for those clothes. Actually, those were not the things that brought you there. You did everything to disguise yourself because you felt you were not qualified to compete to be a queen. And yet, in your disgusting dressing, the king singled you out and said, I still love you. You are the one I'll pick. Because the Lord has placed Esther in the heart of the king. The Lord did not place the look of Esther in the heart of the king. The Lord placed her in the heart of the king. Outside the loop. Because the rest dressed better than her. But when it was time for the purpose, it required prayer. Let me tell you, brethren, the battles in your life and how you are traveling and winning is a reflection of the realm of your prayer. When Haman now got ready to wipe the entire Jews, he paid for it. You know what he needs to pay for one of the biggest massacres that could have taken place? Door to door, men with sword to slay men, father, children, everyone, door to door. The king said, how can this be paid for? He said, I'm putting my card on mine. For his soul, so that is the devil. He cometh not the world, but to kill. The devil cometh not the world, to kill, to steal.
steal and to destroy. And the man who led the people of God to say, no, we have a God. We can only bow to not man. He built a gallon special for that man in front of his own house. So he can sit down with his family and watch him hand. Why? When people are coming and they are rolling on the floor bowing to him, Mordecai refuses to bow. Amen. If I have not bowed enough to my God, who are you? Amen. You are just a mortal man who is intoxicated with power. But I serve a mighty God. When the paper was signed and approved, to set out and the Lord went into action. This grace and the Spirit of God upon Esther Amen. went into what? Three days. The book of Esther chapter 4, three days of fasting and prayer. She could have just said, let me go before the king. No. That three days is a time to climb the ladder she had not climbed before. That three days is to hold on things that she had not heard before. That three days is to give up things that she had not given up before. That three days is to muscle up and summon up grace and strength and confidence that she had never got before. She travailed in what? In prayer. Brethren, it is time to awake your prayer life. Because some situation that you're going to need is going to be more than three days. Some situation is going to be more than one week. Brethren, if you are hearing me tonight, there are battles that are coming that will shake the world, shake the nations, that the true believers and the true church will be revealed. It takes prayer. Hear this today. The fake and the real shall be revealed. It will not, it's not going to be revealed. Lack of prayer life is what drags the church into compromise. Lack of a prayer life is what drags the church not recognizing the power and the authority that has been given. Brethren, there is no ground of winning battles without a prayer life. Esther went into what? Three days later. He went before God in prayer. She didn't do it alone. She said, everyone that walk around me must fast and pray. Everyone that serves in my organization must fast and pray. Everyone dedicated to, to be attached to me must fast and pray. I speak to you today. It is time for every department of the church, of the ministry, children group, men's group, women's group, choir, elders, every area of the priesthood of the home so I wake the prayer because there are prayers that you have to pray now that you don't have to pray later she went before God three days she ascended a height to open the door of the king without an invitation brethren the scepter of the king by judgment is for her to be pronounced dead. But the king could not lift her. I said his head against her. Rather, the king's heart was broken to make a request. Esther, what do you want? Even up to half of my kingdom. Brethren, if your prayer life is going away, how do you know you realize your desire for God is going away? Your interest in God will be going away. The appetite for God will be going away. When you, when you see, when you are looking through your, your social media or your phone or something, and you see something about prayer coming, you will change it. Because why? I, I already done it in church. Nothing of God really draws your attention. Your affection has been shifted. Colossians 2, verse 3. He says, set your affection on things, but you realize that 
if you are real to yourself, you realize that you move the things that involve God out of what you want to say. Why? Because you have become familiar with it. You've lost the hunger and appetite. Brethren, it takes prayer. I said, brethren, it takes prayer. I said, brethren, it takes prayer. Turn your Bibles. Hallelujah. To Luke chapter 18. Luke chapter 18. If you are there, shall we amen? Luke chapter 18. I read from verse 1. Jesus spoke a parable. He said, He spoke a parable unto them. To the end that men ought always to pray. Men ought always to pray. I am speaking a challenge into your prayer life by the leading of the Holy Spirit. I work it, my brethren, and not faint. Verse 2 say, There was in a city a church which feared not God, neither regard man. And there was a widow in that city. And she came unto him, saying, Avenge me of my adversary. And he would not for a while. The woman, a widow was in that city. Helpless. No husband. Nobody to help. She, she, not with a lawyer, she goes before the judge. I am under attack. There are people that are creating trouble, getting into the space of my life, avenge my case. The Bible says the judge gave her what? No attention. He would rather not what? For a while. But afterward, he said, Within himself, the judge spoke to himself. Within himself, though I fear not God, nor regard man, hallelujah, yet because this widow troubled me, are you with me today? Because what? This widow what? Troubled me. What does that mean? Your prayer life cannot stop until answers are released. It's not that I prayed already. Uh, I'm going to wait. No. You pray and when you re receive the answer, you, you, that's even when you pray more to protect it. Because through whom you have received that answer from, is coming back, trying to get it back. Believe in God for divine healing. Now you are healed. It's not for you to take vacation all over the world. It's to stay in the atmosphere of healing. Because they are, one, they are afflicted want to come back and afflict you seven times seven. The afflicted will go back to reinforce. He said, though I fear not God about yet because this will the trouble me, I will do what? I will avenge her. A mother that troubled through prayer. A mother that won't give up say, let my daughter go. Let my son go. My child must be free. My family must be free. The church must advance. Somebody shout amen this morning. He said, I will avenge her. Lest by her continual what coming, she does what? She weary me. She weary me. The sick. And the Lord said, Hear what? An unjust judge said. Are you with me this morning? Jesus said, Listen to a man that is unjust. Look at what he's saying. Hear what an unjust judge says. Verse 7. Let's read verse 7 together. 
and shall not go and shall not what go avenge his own elect why cry day and night unto him though what he hears long with them that's it I'll tell you that he will avenge them speedily are you with me he will do what avenge what speedily nevertheless when the son of man cometh shall he find the faith of when a child keep banging you you are trying to sleep and the child comes shaking you huh put the child away you try to leave that the child come again trouble do what you push the child away you are trying it to go to the point you will get up i say what do you want see i want my fries are you with me until you put that fry on that child's table your sleep will be messed up the child wears he said how much more you better you will knock the heavenly gate with prayer that all day that trouble you shall be troubled. So, brethren, awake. The battle ahead requires prayer. And the weapons that are needed to be used, they are not cannabis. They are the word of God. Brethren, there are battles in your home. There are battles in your job. There are battles ahead of your children. There are battles in destinies and, and aspirations. There are battles against dreams and visions. Don't wait for the enemy to bring the battle to you. Take the battle to the gates of your enemy. Because there's calm and there's peace doesn't mean there's no battle. Brethren, hear this today. The Christians, the body of Christ, it is time for us to get out from that materialism, that material mentality, that material acquisition of flesh. Get into battle. I grew up in the days and the time when you talk about soldiers of Christ. It's not where you come to church and sit down to pray. Soldiers of Christ. That after prayer in the church, you're walking around the street and looking for where to lay hands and where power can be manifested. Creation is still awaiting the manifestations of the sons of and Jesus spoke highly of this. Esther is one example that showed us. Amen? Amen. Are you with me today? The strength of your inner man is being measured by the strength of your prayer life. How you function in your inside is in the scale of your prayer life. Your language and your relationship with people has effects on your prayer life. Your dreams, revelation, understanding, sustaining the power of God comes by the way you function in your prayer life. How that burning desire is in your heart to be empowered by the Holy Ghost. Feel the fire and boldness. It was through prayer life that Paul addressed Alima. Paul was in a level to tell Alima, I close your eyes from today. You can no longer see. Yes, there's a realm where you are sent to and you can close the eyes of men. Heaven will close it. The Bible says from that day, Alima left huh, with his head being laid. That is what the, the Lord has called the church. If the blind walks in and walks out, then we have work to do. We have to be sincere to it. Because these signs work shall follow them. With all sincerity, they that believe shall do what? Lay hands on the sick, and the sick shall recover. Amen. Amen. So we don't look at the sick walking in and the sick walking out. We think something is wrong. Why do people go to the hospital? And they will do everything they can to do to get their way. I don't see you being discharged until they feel you are confident enough to go home. Are you with me? So if they are not confident, what do they do? They run more tests. They run more tests. They keep you there. They want to make sure that when you are discharged, at least they have some control over that situation. How much more the church? 
Let us not be caught up in the things that we think we want to do. That will turn a blind eye to who we are. This sign shall what? Follow the end. That believe in my name. They shall do what? Cast out devils. He never said we should counsel them. Don't take devils to the pastor's office for counseling. You cast them out. Recognize demons. Tell them get out in the name of Jesus Christ. Come out from her. Come out from him in the name of Jesus. But let me tell you, brethren, in prayers, the demons know the church. It comes through prayer. Brethren, hospital is not the first place of healing. The church is the number one place of healing. Amen. The hospital will open up your body and split it physically. But in the church, the hand of God goes in with no visible impartation. And yet you will be healed and live. Amen. I remember one time. The pastor was invited to minister in the church and we went there to minister and a man came in there. Nobody understood what was going on with him. It's just few words and it's what? Prayer. Prayer in the whole atmosphere. By the time we were leaving, the man said, did I just bend down? Because I've not been able to bend for about two, three months. I just bent down. I just stood up. I didn't feel anything. Yes, because sometimes in the atmosphere of prayers, they are not even laying of hands needed. The Spirit of God is moving and fixing things in the life of people. Amen. That's where the church has to be. That every act has to be in prayer. We're not raising children of Hollywood, raising children of fashion looking good, raising children with force in their hand and acting like they will. We raise children of prayer. It is important that we emphasize the importance of prayer to our children that the importance of becoming famous and making it in life. Amen. Hear this this morning. Children could be famous and be destroyed. But prayer will keep them. Amen. That understanding must be clarified in our church today. Whether you're a pastor's son or daughter, you're a bishop's son or daughter, no. It's only when they come to church, we come to church, we talk about Jesus. In the world, we promote things that are not God. And hide other pastors' children and other bishops' children. And minister. Let us be real to ourselves. We shall be custodians of what God has given to us. Let us not end up like Eli. When the glory of the Lord departed from him. Because he looked at his son above the walk. Prayers. Prayers. So the Lord grant us the grace of prayer. The grace of prayer be granted. The supplication with thanksgiving be granted. That's the only way requests be made known. Man like Daniel has prevailed. Man like Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego has prevailed. Man like Elijah has prevailed. Man like Elijah has prevailed. It took prayers. Our life must reflect that in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. I say our life must reflect that in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Say, so, Lord, a flame of prayers must be born in our life. Where do you dwell? Where is your dwelling place? You are not having a prayer life or a place of prayer. Something else is occupying that space. I assure you, brethren, whatever it is will not sustain you. Whatever it is will not sustain the church. It takes prayers. People can talk about every other thing. We could sit down to just listen and enjoy things. But when it comes to prayer, it is spiritual. The Bible says it is the Holy Ghost, the Spirit of God, dwelling internally inside you that cried Abba Father. It cried. There's a cry that comes from the groaning. It was that prayer that Hannah finds herself 
after many years of mocking and humiliation, she finds herself in that groaning that the priest saw her and said, are you drunk? The prayer was bubbling from the belly that words were no longer making it together in her words, in her mouth. Brethren, we must not underrate the enemy we're dealing with. He has an organized kingdom. His name is the devil, Lucifer. He functions in realms. And I want you to understand very one thing. He knows the scripture. We must not be ignorant of his tactics and his devices. Are you with me today? Turn your Bibles. When you have a prayer life, your enemies are judged in your absence. Amen. One area that the devil attacks very well is the life of prayer, is the area of prayers. The happenings in your life must be reflections of the prayer answered or, or answered prayer. Hallelujah. Matthew chapter 21. Finally this morning. If we look at the life of Dorcas, it was prayers. Esther, it was prayers. Deborah, it was prayers. Today's mothers, they will know. For you to build effectively as a woman, you have to pray some devils out of your house. Yeah. Listen, don't take it for granted. Sometimes you have to create some, some, some sleepless environment in the house. Speak in tongues around the house so that nobody sleeps. Are you with me? Just switch on the stove, turn off everything in the house. The fridge, the stove, everything. What is going on? Mama is not happy. Something needs to be put, on, put right in the house. Amen. Sitting down to judge and discuss who did this, who did that. Never solve prayer. Never solve issues. Where the devil want to be the chairman to settle case in the house. Open that door. Say, devil, you don't believe me. Get out. In the name of Jesus Christ. Get out of my children. You witchcraft. Manipulation. Every deposit of the enemy. Get out in the name of Jesus. Get out of my thoughts. Get out of my life. Get out of my finances. Get out of my business. The Bible says resist the devil. He must flee. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Esther defeated him. He threw his last grip in his mouth. He thought he was going for a banquet. From that banquet, he was dressed up, dragged like a piece of dog to his own gallon. That's what happened to those that touch the lives of prayer lives. Amen. Amen. Matthew chapter 21. I speak to your faith today. I pray we hold on this from the bottom of our heart. Verse 12. Please pay attention today. I challenge you to the Listen, it, it, it might not happen overnight. But stay strong in it. You are guaranteed the result. Matthew chapter 21, verse 12. And Jesus came to church. That's the word I can use to this morning. Went where? Into the temple. I'm going to the service. Just like you and I. And did what? And cast out what? All day that sold and bought in the temple. Are you serious? Listen to me, brethren. Don't go to a church where there's no prayer. It doesn't matter the decoration. It doesn't matter the activities. Those who are two minute prayer and five hours of performance is not needed in this Bible time. Amen. Who 
who wear the most expensive clothes, who drove the most expensive car to church, who has the most connection. No, that is not going to open. The devil has no respect for things like that. Yes. Jesus came in. This is the word I use. Church has become a place of exchange of business cards, business connections. Come and see me in my office. Come and, I, I, nothing is remembered about the name of Christ being glorified. It's all about where businessmen and women come and meet. It has become a little set of social media, a little YouTube and, and a Facebook space. Marketing. Connections. Buying and selling. And many come to church without a Bible. But eventually they want to hold a Bible, they buy newspaper to wrap it up. They are ashamed of that gospel. But you're going in there for the benefit. They stop by the corner to smoke and drink and buy some lollipops in their mouth to quench it down. Are you serious? Jesus came in. For the first time in the Bible, brethren, we talk about the peaceful, loving Jesus become violent. Became angry. It is time for you to understand those that come around you. If they cannot handle 30 minutes of your prayer, don't let them come around your circle. Prayer with theater. Those that can go to war with you or not. Amen. Came into the temple of God and cast out all them that were sold and bought in the temple. And did what? What did he do? Can you read this with me this morning? Not the pastor saying this. He overthrew what? The tables of what? Of the money changers. You know what I mean? Money changers, currency, different notes. I'm selling euro, yen, yen, all kind of currency, dollar. It overturned the table. Which one do you want? Which one do you want? This is not to be done in my house. It has defied the temple. It has polluted ministers. It has watered down. That people have become merchandise. Overturn their tables, threw it out. Money changes and seats of them that sold doors. This is the thing. This was his response. And he said unto them, We have to do what is written. Church, we have to do what is written. He defeated the devil 40 days and 49 by what? By what is written. And to you and I, brethren, we have been called to the ministry of reconciliation by what, by what is written. Let the devil know. He said, my father's house, my house, my house. He called the temple of God. This is my house. Are you with me? This is the house of Jesus Christ. Amen. I am here to let you know this is my house. If in case you've been doubting who the son of God is, I'm introducing myself to you in another way. This is my house. My house shall be what? Call the house of prayer. This place must be called a place of prayer. But you have torn it. 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 You have made it a Damn of thieves, a hangout, a place where people come and hang out. I'm just going to church to hang out. I'm just going to church. Are you coming to church? Yes, I am coming. Okay, I'm coming. We're going to meet in church. No, I'm not coming. So, I, so we can't meet. No, so I'm, I'm not going to come. Let's find somewhere else to meet. A damn of thieves. That shouldn't be what the church is known for. Because thieves never give you anything they take from you. They take those precious things. And it's one of the character of the devil. He comes on the world to kill, to steal, and to destroy. So the church will arise. Wake up to prayer. 
So when somebody comes and says, I am sick, right there, your spirit is lifted to lay hands. According to Mark chapter 15, verse 16, 16 15, he said, You shall lay hands on the sick. Which means you have believed God to that point to know that your hands carry healing. And the sick will recover. That fire must be burning in the church today. Because the devil is busy. And so many things are happening today. Brethren, as we celebrate today, I will talk of our mothers. I speak of the mothers. If you must build with a strong fence, with a material that's right, it has to be found in prayer. It has to be the bedrock and the platform of prayer. You have to speak to the enemies of your children for prayer. Amen. Are you with me today? Are you with me today? No one touches your children can come back and tell you how they feel. Because the power of God will slay them. Amen. Therefore, signs and wonders. Stand on your feet today. Amen. Let's use this opportunity to pray strength upon our mothers. Father, in the name of Jesus. We are not going to be talking about the days of Esther of the past. The Esthers of this generation. Brethren, look at our schools today. Young children are changing their agendas without their parents knowing. Innocent children that are born women to bring children into the world are being polluted at a level. By the time the parent knew it, the young the, the woman is turning herself into against the ordinances of the word of God an abomination of this generation we are seeing in such an alarming rate because the devil is walking beyond and we think it's not close to us men dressing up like women Fantasizing it to make the children look it is okay. Women dressing up like men. A complete loss of the true identity of what God has created. Brethren, this does nothing else but pulling the finger of wrath or judgment. Read the scriptures in the days of Sodom and Gomorrah. The Lord said, I have no need for that portion of the earth. The Bible says, for the first time hell came down on earth. It rained down fire and what? Bring stones. Check it. For the first time he sent a piece of the element of hell into Sodom and Gomorrah. It wasn't a beauty. It was a white. We are praying this morning. Say, Lord, Lord God of heaven, the garment of prayer the garment of prayer and wake us and wake the church and wake the body of Christ. We don't back to those days. I remember the days of SU Scripture Union. Fellowship in the 60s, in the 70s. There you can look at men and women of God and you want to be like them in power and in prayer. Today, who do you want to look at? Until you have money to buy a private jet, you have no one to admire. Brethren, this has to be spoken. I believe someday this thing will answer somebody. generation is wiping away that today the youth who are they that we handle where is the, where is the Elisha that will take a mantle from Elijah who are those that we desire I want nothing less but not give me wisdom I want nothing less but give me double portion what is the desire today we want cars. We want money. 
I was reading a story of a young lady who was laying that sick in the hospital. He said, I have private jet, I can't enter it. I have the, one of the biggest mansions in Europe that I am in role. I have a, my bedroom is so massive that I have been carried by two people confined in the room. He said, I am branded worldwide. I am known, but yet I am confined to this little bird. So this is where it all ends. I have the best shoes. I shop around the world, but I have nobody to wear it. I can afford any kind of weave, any kind of clothes, any kind of fashion style, but I have no hair on my head. See, why did I run after these things anyway in the first place? She came in the conclusion of her statement and said, which means God is more than everything. If you are hearing me today, I speak this into your face and to the camera. Wherever you are, you will come across this tape someday. Whatever you have with you is vanity. If you are pursuing anything in life and Jesus is out of it, it is vanity. If you are running after everything in life and Jesus is not part of it, it is vanity. It will not last. Hear this today. The biggest mansion in the world will roll away. Amen. The cave house in the hill will roll away. The highways and the Beverly Hills will roll away. But his world will never go. I speak to you today. And I release this to you today. There are battles that will rise up. If you have not prepared yourself, you cannot go. Jesus said in the book of Revelation, as he spoke to John, he said, tell the people to return back to the things that you first started. Amen. There are silent wars and quiet battles that are hanging around you because they look no one know. Pray them out. Sense them, recognize them, and I wait to pray. There is a Haman that is ready to harm somebody. Go in fasting. A time has come that the church and power, the Bible said the apostles of old. If you are hearing it today, people were bringing their sick to the church instead of going to the doctor. That's how it's supposed to be. And the Bible said they were bringing them and they were healed all manner of conditions because the mindset of the people was about the kingdom, not about fashion. If you are centered in your look, you have lost your identity. If you are centered in your possession, you have lost your purpose. If you are sensed, if you are focused in your way, you have lost why God gave them to you. I never brought you out of darkness for you to think all that I gave you is for yourself. This message I'm speaking, there are times prayer will be made, nothing can happen for you. The Lord said, no, I can't break my word. May the Lord have mercy on us that many of us don't find ourselves eating from the swine before we know that we have failed in our responsibility before God. I went to prayers. I went to prayers. Talk to someone and say, I went to prayers. Don't turn the house of God to a den of ticks, a den of thieves, a place of hangout, a place of senseless discussion, a place of worldliness, performance and drama, all kind of activity, anything taking place in the heart of the Lord, it is a place of reference. For the first time, Jesus went violent. He said, get out! I'd rather have it empty than have a bunch of people. Fill the place. Amen. Get your tables out. 
Let us not come into the house of the Lord, into the church with a heart of table of buying and selling, choosing what we want to accept the Lord. If we want to experience the actual visitation, the power of the Holy Ghost, it takes prayer, it takes traveling. Jesus wasn't joking 40 days and 40 nights. It was prayers. For Moses to receive the Ten Commandments, it was 40 days and 40 nights. It was prayers. For the Holy Ghost to come down in prison and smash the chains out of the heads of Paul and Silas, they were not praying in prison or arguing. It was prayers. Amen. For heaven to release an angel to go to the prison and go through seven gates to release Peter, it was not joke. The believers were not gathering in that upper room just discussing. It was prayers. Prayers move the hand of God. As they were praying, the Lord answer released the hand. That went through the seven gates and tell Peter to leave. The battles you have not won in the spirit, you cannot prevail in the physical. I want to pray for you, Heavenly Father, today. Today, Lord, if there's anyone that has a dead prayer life, Receive reservation. Amen. Any dormant prayer life, let it be stirred up. Amen. In the name of Jesus Christ. Every prayerless marriage. Amen. Yet this today. Prayerless marriage. Amen. I come against prayerlessness in marriage. Like a pastor. Hey. The bedrock where the devil fucks you or pray. It, it doesn't matter how you look and dress and go to church. As long as you and your husband or you and your wife or there's no gathering or there's no discussions or spiritual things and prayer, he knows everything. Is, he, he has control over it. Today we come against it. Somebody have to pray. If you are hearing this today as a man, whether you are listening for it, and throughout the week, throughout the month, you have nothing to sit down with your wife and say, Honey, as I was studying the word of God, the spirit of the Lord began to read it. Come on, let's go into prayer for the next five, ten minutes. If that is not your life, then something wrong with you as a man. Huh? Do you understand the priesthood of home? You serve in an altar called the head. It comes to prayers. As a woman, you can walk around the house. 30 minutes in the night. 15 minutes in the night. And be consistent. I say, Lord, wherever my children are, wherever the sons and daughters are, wherever my brethren are, Wherever the church, whatever is going on, Lord, I take authority over the confusion in my job. Many of you driving home from your work with tears, take it to prayers. Take it to God. Someone that said, What a friend I have in Jesus. What a friend I have in Jesus. All my sins and grief he bear. What a privilege to carry. What a privilege to do what? To carry. What? Everything to God in what? In prayer. Some of us might think it is fashion, it is a lifetime. No, we are possessed. There's a spirit that's working in us that looked good or looked in appearance, but inside us it is not God. We need to be delivered from it. It is time to break loose from a form, a look of godliness. There's no power. Heavenly Father, we pray. And wake the home. Father, I wake the children. Father, I wake families. Father, I wake the couples. Father, I wake the men. 
Father, I wake the women to step on ground and destroy many humans who believe they have right to wipe out the dreams and visions of many generations. Just as Haman lost to Esther, every Haman in your life will lose. Every Haman in your marriage will lose. Every Haman in the life of your children will lose. Anyone that has built a gallon for you, they, are, they will hang themselves in it. The word of God said he was building it, he financed it. He has no idea God turned it for himself, for, him, for, for, for himself, that he ended up being hung in so very gallon. They that kindled the fire for Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego to be consumed, where they won't consume in the fire. Amen. A prayer life will give you grace to walk. You might be thrown into fire, the Lord said, I will be with you. Amen. Somebody might say that I, I, the more I began to pray, it seemed like I have more troubles. Now you are really praying. Because your prayer life will attract trouble. You are in battle anyway. If you have no troubles, you have no prayer. I am speaking to you today. Amen. If, you, if the devil is not challenging you, then there is no prayer. Prayer will draw the enemy to be defeated before you. Amen. Father, have your way, Holy Spirit. Be thou exalted. Amen. Be thou magnified. Let this be a memorial for today as we remember our mothers. And as we speak of great women in the Bible, that through prayer, great covenant were released over them. Vows were made. Through prayer, Hannah brought forth a song called Samuel. Amen. A prophet that heard the voice of God utterly. Through prayer, Amen. through prayer, Esther stepped into a ground, opened the door of the king, and walked in with confidence. Ground and no man, nothing that anybody has ever done through prayer. Deborah, root, true prayer. They shut down gates. The one I call today, we shut down the gates of the kingdom of God. Open against the children of this ministry and children of the body of Christ. We rebuke them in the name of Jesus. Every forces that have been assigned, mounted up, partners with the kingdom of darkness, working against ministers, working against men and women of God, those in the forefront of the battle. We ask, oh God, that the Lord build a fence of fire around them in the name of Jesus Christ. That they will prevail over the powers of the enemy and the kingdom of darkness. What I'm speaking to you right now is not something that's simple. I know the enemy is angry. I know the devil is angry. But I stand under the grace of God that was so ever the enemy brief forth there is victory. Amen. Thank you, Father. Can someone shout in this morning? Amen. Let's put our hands together. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the sweet fellowship of the Holy Spirit rest and abide with us now and forevermore. Amen. Amen. Surely, goodness and mercy shall follow us all the days of our lives, and we shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever and ever. Amen and amen. Exodus chapter 14, verse 14 says, The Lord shall fight for you, and you shall hold your peace. God bless you.